This is a presentation that is brand new. Um, I've been working on it for over a year, and there's some data that I have today that's going to make it worth it. So, you know, I'm super excited that you're here. A little bit of background about me. I've been on YouTube since the beginning, 2005. I own a company that focuses uh, primarily on audience development and growth, and we work on monetization strategies. Uh, we do a lot of paid strategies as well. We get that world. Uh, I'm pretty much certified in everything you can be certified in on YouTube and, and Google. Um, I've generated 33 billion views, 21 gold play buttons, got my 21st the other, the other day, it was really fun, um, and 19 billion views on Facebook. Here's something that you don't know about the 21 billion, or 21 uh, gold play buttons. I, I have goals in my life, and it's not necessarily putting the gold play button on, the, on the, the wall or anything, but I wanted to get it in every different vertical I possibly could on YouTube just to prove that it can be done in every vertical. I truly do believe it, and we're going to talk about that today. But we're going to start with misconceptions on YouTube. There's a lot of different misconceptions on YouTube, and I, I get a lot of people reaching out to me as YouTube support, and they're like, hey, Daryl, there's something's going on with my channel. And I hear the, the terms all the time, my channel, my channel's dying, my channel, my channel, my channel. Now, if there's one piece of information I want you to, to walk away with is this. It's not about the channel anymore. It's not about your YouTube channel. Hasn't been about your YouTube channel for a very long time. What you need to do is start really understanding what it's truly about. When you, when you switch the mindset of what it actually is and you start delivering what YouTube actually wants, then it changes it. And this is, the, this is the, the key right here, that channels are no longer the dominant as they once were, but it's all about something, and the key is this. It's all about video, the YouTube video, and the viewer. And more importantly, getting the right type of viewer to watch your video. And what we're going to kind of talk about this is really going over the algorithm and what it's looking for and, and helping you. And I, I can truly show you what you can actually do to improve. And uh, big applause to YouTube. I know YouTube is, uh, has gone through some difficult times, but some of the things that they're introducing now are game changers for you as creators and also brands. And I'm going to talk about that uh, specifically in this, in this uh, uh, presentation. So let's kind of go off of this, uh, the algorithm. I know a lot of people really get frustrated with the algorithm. Uh, there are multiple algorithms on the YouTube. Uh, what, what makes up the different things that are happening on YouTube is the YouTube AI. Uh, that's basically machine learning. The machine is trying to learn and predict behavior for achieving the goals of YouTube. So what do they want to do? Well, they're going to learn and grow, and so there's a lot of updates that happen. Uh, there's over 200 updates that occurred this last year, and 2,000 split testing experiments that they go out and test things and try to gather more data to get the results. So they actually set goals, let the AI do its thing, comes back, and they see the results, and based off of that, they'll pivot a little bit, and before you know it, it becomes an update. Uh, these updates are pretty big, um, and they can affect us as creators if we're focusing in on the wrong things. And I think that a lot of creators uh, that are creating content on YouTube really focus in on the wrong, wrong things, and they're really missing the mark. And I'm going to show you some of the things that you need to look at. Goal number one for the AI is to predict what the viewer will watch. It's all about the video and it's all about the viewer. Now when you can start figuring out who your viewer type is and kind of understanding that target audience and that target demo and really understanding what's there, then YouTube will help promote your stuff. They'll promote your, your videos out to the right type of viewers. So the number one goal that, that the AI has is try to predict what people watch. Why is that? <coughs> well, it's to maximize watch time. Because if they can predict what people will watch, they'll keep the viewers on the platform longer. Now, this is the key, is creators that understand this, that really just understand, look, I understand my target niche. I'm very localized on my, on my channel. I understand what's going on. And you're giving content that resonates really well with an audience, and you get them to come back to YouTube day after day then you are going to be blessed by the YouTube gods and you will literally start getting views. But today I'm going to explain to you that it's changed a little bit. 
And it's good for content creators, really, really good, because understanding these goals will help you achieve your overall objective. Now, there's a paper that was released a couple years ago uh, by uh, some engineers really talking about the algorithm, uh, really going in depth on Google Brain, uh, which is the, the engine for the machine learning on YouTube. Uh, there's a paper you can find on, on, uh, online, really, really in depth. Um, I'm still, my head's still spinning from some of the stuff that they're actually talking about in some of the equations. But ultimately, it's the goal of predicting what viewers want. So I, I want to kind of explain an example of how the AI interacts. Now, let's just say that we have a viewer. This viewer loves to watch YouTube on their mobile device. Okay, so when they go on their mobile device, YouTube's starting to gather data on them specifically, and they're starting to figure out their viewing behaviors and patterns. So they actually have viewing behavior and patterns for all of us, and they're starting to identify what we're going to watch. What, what, is, what is a higher probability of, for us to watch next? So that viewer goes on the mobile device, looks at their phone, and says, okay, these are the results that I get. I got video A, video C, and video B that's being suggested to me because I'm on the mobile device. Well, they get home, they turn on their, their Apple TV, and they get different results. Why do they get different results? Is because the viewing behavior of that viewer. Even though they're on a different device, they know, oh, on, when they're on mobile, they actually only do shorter videos and they have a, a lower tolerance for these types of videos. So let's suggest these types of videos. But on, on Apple TV, the app, Let's go ahead and give them different results because they, he actually, this person, this viewer, has a longer view duration and will tolerate longer videos. And so what are we gonna do? We're gonna suggest them longer videos. So it's really, really intelligent of what it is. And it, uh, this is just an example of how the AI would work and think is really trying to predict what's gonna be best for the viewer. Uh, and so it's gonna recommend shorter videos for this specific viewer in this specific case because of what they're, the, the, how they view on mobile. And also they're gonna uh, send longer videos for them on the YouTube app because of how they view YouTube on the YouTube app. So I hope that makes sense because what they're trying to do is uh, 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 predict that behavior. And I can't reiterate this enough. It's always about the video and the viewer. And if you can really start understanding and getting in the heads of your target audience and really knowing who they are, that will give you a better idea of how to actually use YouTube to start suggesting your videos. So what is the number one traffic source on YouTube? Okay. What is the fastest way to grow on YouTube? We have it. Suggested videos. Seriously, it is suggested videos. When YouTube starts promoting your video, you will grow, and I'm here to tell you that individual videos that take off will grow your subscriber base. But I don't want you to get so fixated on subscribers. I know that seems really odd, because everyone has this, and it's, I think it's just like the social status. If I got, you know, uh, four million subscribers or whatever it is, but it's always about the engagement of the viewer, and when you understand how to trigger that, then all the success will come with that as well, as long as you understand the metrics and the triggers that will help YouTube decide and predict for your ideal target uh, viewer, okay? And so suggested videos is the fastest way to grow. In fact, I, I just saw a, a friend of mine started a YouTube channel and um, did it for years, but he had a breakout hit, got picked up, and, and he got 400,000 subscribers in a matter of a few weeks just off of one video. And so it's, it's real, and so there is a huge shift right now uh, happening how YouTube suggests videos. And this is something I've been studying for years, and I've got to put a disclaimer out. Uh, we manage a lot of channels, and you know, we only have data that we understand, and so I needed more data. Uh, I needed more data to, to draw the conclusions of what I was actually looking for. And I've seen a huge shift of how YouTube actually suggests videos, and I know a lot of you have reached out to uh, YouTube and you know, you've been in your frustration on Twitter because of some of the changes that occurred and you don't really understand what's going on. And so today my goal is to show you how YouTube has shifted and how to leverage it. Does that sound good? Okay, big thanks to vidIQ, Rob Sandy, 
uh, literally saved my bacon because I needed a whole bunch of information. And so he collectively gave me a huge sample size uh, that I could deal with. So it wasn't just my small little 50 channel you know, sample size. We, we had a, a huge sample size of information. Let me, let me show you what YouTube was looking at uh, last year for suggestions. So on this, there's a graph. The blue is suggested video, the red is subscriber. Now, last year in April, the YouTube was suggesting a lot of specific uh, videos in the first seven days. In fact, I was sitting on the stage, or presenting on the stage, talking about a seven day deterioration rate from your suggestion. You can see exactly what was happening in seven days. It was deteriorating, but things changed. And I want to show you how things have flipped around and it's going to help you change your strategy from it. Uh, in June, it goes up. And these, this is on a ch all the channels that were under 100,000. Uh, we'll show you some other results here in a second. Uh, but you can see that where it changed. Here in September, there's a lot of people that are saying, oh man, my subscribers aren't being notified. And there's a lot of, my subscribers aren't seeing my videos. Look at that, they literally dropped. And then come, the big one was actually right, uh, right around Thanksgiving. There's a huge change that happened in December. Notice that the blue line now is below, literally below, and the subscriber is up higher. Uh, and then finally, April, uh, here is the, the data. Now, this is what's interesting. If you look to the chart before, um, in that first 24 hours, suggested a year ago, YouTube would suggest your video. 66% of those views would come in the first 24 hours, okay? And then you can see the percentage just go down. However, uh, in April this year, look, it's only 28, 28%. But then you have 50, they're getting it out more to your subscribers. And so from doing this, I wanna show you the different uh, things. We don't have a lot of time here, but it, it does change just a little bit for your size of the channel but it doesn't change that, that much. And the big thing about it is YouTube is now normalizing this and, and really getting it in a way to suggest it in a way to get us all more views if you understand how to actually make that trigger. So that being said, this is probably the most fascinating one is the million subscriber one. Uh, notice suggested videos was 66.7% uh, in that first 24 hours last April. This April, it's 16%. Uh, but the subscribers numbers is 60%. So the more subscribers are actually viewing the videos, uh, we're not gonna get into the whole notification uh, debacle. Okay, so here's the conclusions to this. Views are being suggested more after 14 to 120 days. What does this mean for you as a creator? This means that you have a really long tail strategy that you can get a lot more views after 14 days and you can before 14 days. Um, you can actually start taking breaks now. You don't have to kill yourself trying to upload every day because a lot of the views are gonna be on the tail end. And if you do the strategy right, you can get a ton more views in less uploads. Um, also, this is probably the biggest thing for me is data gathering is now delayed in minutes um, instead of days. Now before, what you do is when you actually upload a video, YouTube would look at your metadata. They look at your title, your description, your tags, your closed captioning, and then literally start to suggest that out to your own library and get suggested views off of that. And last year, it was really heavily pushed in that first seven days. Well, now it's shifted where they're able to gather the data that they need, disregard, I wouldn't say all the meta, but most of the meta, and look at the, the, next, uh, the, the, next data that they're, the next data points that they're looking at. And let me kind of talk about these data triggers because once you understand the data triggers, that helps you understand how to shift your strategy and how you need to, to release your videos and such. Uh, so they're looking at the metadata in the first few hours. They're looking heavily, 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 heavily on the viewer history data. And so if you have a viewer that's notoriously, uh, like religiously looking at your back catalog on a certain topic of videos, and maybe watch two or three times the same video, well, there, if you release something similar to that, of course that's gonna be heavily suggested in that first seven day period to that subscriber because they're gonna watch it. And it's really going to, to follow them around until they watch it because 
they're highly engaged with that. They're also going to look at people that are similar to that and help, help grow that and expand that, but that's more on the tail end of, of the suggestions. Uh, we're going to talk about impressions versus click-through. Um, there's only a couple things that ever got me really, really excited about the, the things that YouTube released, and this is one of them. Um, I'm here to tell you this right here is literally a game changer for everyone sitting in the audience. I don't care if you're a brand, I don't care if you're a creator. This data is so critical of starting the triggers that, that are needed and really help you to grow on YouTube. And so it's really, really important to understand this. And seriously, I, I, I don't know if there's anybody from YouTube here, but honestly, my hat's off. This makes everything all worth it because this data is what I've been just craving for um, because we never knew the impression versus click-through rate. We could only guess. And now we can actually make strategic data-driven decisions to make better content to get it more suggested. Now, there's a couple things that we're gonna look at. We're gonna go in depth on this um, and really break it down. But I wanna show you the results. This is one of the channels that we had. The only thing that we did was have the data of understanding the split testing. Like we could only guess, oh, maybe this thumbnail's not performing well, because all we were doing is guessing before, but all we did was change the thumbnail. That's it. There was no other strategy. We didn't change our content. We didn't do anything like that. We just changed the thumbnail, and we had three times the amount of views just based off of that. That is huge. We didn't do anything to the content. All we did is spend a little bit more time on our back catalog, our underperforming thumbnails, made them better thumbnails, and YouTube started to recommend them more. So much so that we got three times the, the traffic. The views on this is ridiculous, too. So, what is a good click-through rate? I know a lot of people says, hey, I got this data now. Now, what is a good click-through rate? Is 5% good? Is 12% good? You know, what's a good click-through rate? Now, for me, I'm gonna answer it a little bit differently. Now, uh, to understand YouTube, you gotta understand that everything's individualized <laughs> and very niche-specific with video. So, it's gonna look at uh, similar videos that are out there and see the click-through rate and see what their average is. And if you're higher than that average, then that's a good click-through rate. But for me, I always wanna get a higher click-through rate because if I get a higher click-through rate, that means I'm gonna have a higher average and YouTube's gonna give me a higher percentage of recommending my content. And so, uh, what we're gonna talk about is the long tail approach. And this is something that, I, I was just talking with uh, my friend at WWE, um, like this is a strategy that bigger brands and stuff actually <laughs> do, is the long tail approach. They, they're not all putting out new content, but they're gonna go through their back library and figure out how to maximize it, because YouTube is now promoting older content uh, really, really heavily, and if you can optimize that, you can get more views without even you know, increasing your workload. Uh, so that being said, um, there's a couple methods, but after 28 days, I found that that's when it is a good time to do A-B testing on your thumbnails. Now, I'm not, we, uh, YouTube used to have a beta a long time ago on uh, thumbnail A-B testing. I don't know if they currently have that. Um, so you might want to reach out to your partner manager and ask them if that beta is still open or where that's at. Uh, YouTube, if you're listening, if there's anything that would ever bless the community of YouTube, it would be this, that we could actually do A-B testing on our thumbnails. You, you, you provided the data for the impression, the click-through, but if we can pick winners of what thumbnails, and we can be more like Netflix, <laughs> and which changes the thumbnail for one demographic to the other, I would love you forever. Uh, and I wouldn't go to YouTube, or to uh, Instagram. Um, okay. <laughs> Going back to this, the, the yeah. 28 days is really, really important because that, that's kind of where you get a ton of views and you can actually do some, uh, uh, some good split tests. Um, here is a split test that we did internally. Um, you can see our click-through rate was really good. I, I think anything above 12 is really good, but for me, I'm never satisfied because we can always do better. Uh, so uh, with this, we had 14.2%. You can see it equated to you know, uh, over 100,000 views and so on. By just changing the thumbnail, the thumbnail, no title, no description, no tags, just the thumbnail, it started getting recommended more, where we're getting 23.1 click-through rate. And notice the, the graph that YouTube's preventing 99.8% out to uh, potential people that would be interested in that. That's huge. And what I would encourage everyone to do is have a strategy uh, and it's worth, it's worth hiring someone to design your thumbnails, it's worth hiring someone 
to implement this if you don't have the time to go back and literally do some split testing through uh, your older content that's 28 days to 45 days or even older. Um, what I like to do is go in, this is a ninja tactic, but go into your real-time analytics, see which your top performing videos you can sort by uh, last 60 minutes, 48 hours, and see which one's the 48 hours and which the videos that's on the rise that's a little bit older, it could be a year old or two years old or whatever, just see what's there, and go up through the click-through rate on that, and then I literally will change that. I'll, I'll do an A-B test on that one, and I, I've seen it just go through the roof, like literally get triple the amount of views that I would have gotten otherwise. Um, uh, Peter Hollins, if you don't know who he is, he's on YouTube, he's pretty big. I really like him a lot. He sent me this graph. Um, if you go to TubeBuddy, go to TubeBuddy.com forward slash go, you can get this tool. It does uh, split testing for you, and it, and it does it in a way that's, that's okay. It's not the best way, but it's the only way that I found possible to actually do good thumbnail testing, uh, A-B testing. Now, what I do is I run these tests uh, you know, on my older content. I do not do it on the newer content, um, and I'll kind of talk about that strategy of how you actually need to, to do that. So, triggering uh, data suggested um, uh, video views, you know, it's all about the metadata, your viewer history, your impressions versus click-through rates, but then it's about audience retention, and, and this is something that every content creator needs to pay really close uh, together. Now, the new uh, Creator Studio is amazing. I love it. It's just, it's like literally organizing in a way that uh, common creators can really understand how to optimize. Um, and we need to really understand that and also true viewer engagement. I'm going to talk about that here right now. Um, I'm going to give you a real example. Um, I actually started a brand new YouTube channel and I have some partners in it. We had our first upload uh, in May, uh, May 30th, uh, 2018. Zero views, zero subscribers. We didn't do any uh, tactics. They aren't real YouTubers yet. Uh, our target audience is very specific, five-year-old to 13-year-old boys, like we're really hyper-focused in on that. Uh, we released uh, some videos. This is one of our videos of the uh, most powerful Nerf Gun mod that we did. It's two twin brothers that are my partners on it. Uh, thumbnail super, super engaging for sure. It's kind of telling the story. It's very interactive. It's everything best practices that YouTube tells you to do. Well, here's the, the real thing is right here we had 643 subscribers. And what we were able to do, and what I really like to pay attention to, is the average view per or average views per viewer is 2.7. And we'll talk about that because really understanding what that means can help you literally leverage it in a way that you need to. So here's their, their click-through data. Uh, you're able to see that we're getting 50% recommended. This is a brand new channel, and YouTube's recommending 50% of it. So when someone watches it, you know, half of it's coming from YouTube suggestion right there. Our click-through rate is, is decent. Uh, I want to be in the 20s because I, I like to win. Uh, and then also, our, our um, average view duration isn't as high as I like it. Uh, I like it around 50%. And so they're still learning and we're still growing from there. But the engagement is the key. Um, have you guys ever seen the uh, uh, audience retention graph? Are you looking at your data when you're, you're releasing a video? What you want to see is these little spikes that happen in the video. That is true engagement. It's not a like, it's not a share but it's what the, the algorithm is looking at is a true engagement. That means they literally rewound the video and watch that part again, okay? That is super powerful. Now, I've seen content creators get really creative <laughs> with this to engage the community to, as they're watching the videos, that they catch certain things, it might have something pop up, they have to rewind to do it. They get pretty creative with it. That's what you need to be looking at, is how can we get these little pops to get higher than normal uh, true engagement. Because when you get this, that's when, that's when you have massive growth. Uh, and so, it, you know, really to understand how to actually get suggested views, you need to look at your impression versus click-through data uh, about four days into it. Um, if you do it earlier than that, it's going to be skewed the wrong way. You need to give it about four days uh, and enough time to collect some data. And what I would do is if it's under the percentage of what you average, you get on an average, change the thumbnail immediately. Um, I, when you're doing your thumbnails, I would design maybe two or three different versions of it, have it ready to go, so that you can switch that out. I have literally seen channels that literally has stumped growth 
uh, in that first four days where they changed out the thumbnail and the, and the, uh, the uh, video took off. Does a couple things. People rewatch it because they think it's a new video and, and they're able to do it. I'm not saying be deceptive, it's just saying let's get a higher click through, uh, click through rate. Um, next, I would do an A-B test. I would do an A-B test at 28, 45 days. I would literally go back through our uh, past catalog and literally uh, pick videos that you're cherry picking to, uh, to do A-B tests. Don't go hog wild where you're doing your whole inventory. Like literally be strategic of like 10, 15 videos that you're always just testing and, and improving. I would go with uh, some of your top performing videos. Do not, I reiterate, do not mess with the metadata. Just change the thumbnail. Has no, no, no problem. If you start changing the metadata, then there's some other things that you don't want to uh, have happen. Uh, focus in on audience retention. Uh, you know, try to get it in the Goldilocks zone. The Goldilocks zone is 50% of the people that actually started the video finishes the video. And um, be very strategic with that. Uh, I found the drop-off rate, um, if you will just fix the last uh, 30 seconds to 40 seconds of all your videos, you'll get a higher retention rate. Uh, some people draw it out way too long when they should just end it like within within 10 seconds and be really, really engaging. I, there's even some content creators that just end and like, what, what, what did it just end? But it's like literally getting that retention to happen. And so the only way you can do that is look at the data, look at the videos that perform higher, look at the data that YouTube's providing us and seeing what's going on. You can literally play the video and see what's going on. You can make some assumptions, you can see what's you know being commented and so on. Really, really important with that. The next was is try to, to trigger true engagement. Now, what I like to do, this new channel, like we're all about uh, uh, true engagement because that's like I truly believe that's a way to get suggested more. You saw this new channel has got a ton of views, uh, you know, a ton of subscribers in a short amount of time, based off of that, and it's being more interactive with the audience and to, to engage. And there were some ways to do that in the past that we can't necessarily do now, but you can be more connected organically with your with your viewer where they'll want to be more involved with your content so in this all all, all this is is, is it's not new it's best practices guys really at the end of the day youtube literally has given us the keys to the kingdom with giving our impression through click through and having that that first that first data metric that first trigger that we need to really make good data-driven decisions so that we can actually say oh now we're getting a higher suggestion. Now, wait, we're getting some drop off. We need to work on our videos to actually get our videos to be a little bit better. Is there a way that we can re-edit them or cut them in a different way? They'll be more engaging. And, and truly, I want everyone to start thinking of, uh, this is probably the biggest tip that I can give you, is think in video series where you have uh, like four or five or six videos that all relate to each other. That is super important because what it's going to do it's going to feed off each other and start going from there. And if you can actually get it for similar channels that have a similar type of audience that's doing the similar type of things, then you can start feeding each other uh, suggestions as long as you have a lot of cross crossover uh, viewer data. And so you're able to see a lot of channels. Like one of the ones that I really like is Stephen Carter Share, Lizzie Share's channels. And that's, that's what they're doing. They like, literally do videos that complement each other and they're able to grow from there. And so, realistically, uh, at the end of the day, check your, check your information. Don't overanalyze where you have paralysis, but re re be very strategic of looking at your click-through data. Uh, whatever the percentage is, let's make it go up, and then really look at your audience retention and go from there. Now, I've had a couple of people that says, hey, I got 78% click-through rate. You know, no one sees 78% click-through rate. You know, I'm doing pretty good. I says, well, there's a little graph above that of how YouTube's actually promoting that. If you're not getting it to the 80, 90, you know, 99% of YouTube suggestion, then there's a problem with that. So yeah, your click-through rate's good, but your other problem is in the other data that YouTube's actually looking at. So um, guys, thank you so much for coming. There's so much you can learn here. There's a lot of creators that can really do it. Now what I'm gonna do is after the session, I'm gonna go outside and I will answer your questions until I lose my voice. Uh, that's why I'm here at VidCon. I really want to answer personally uh, your, your questions and so on. Thank you so much for coming. I hope you have a great time. Yeah.